Yeah. Time is running out. That's obviously true on a biographical level. You're the youngest you'll ever be right now. Uh, you'll never be this young again. And someday you'll be on your deathbed and you'll maybe think, wow, that was quick. When that deathbed moment reaches back to the present, it does give me a feeling of, yeah, time is running out. But really where that wants to take me is my time here is precious. This life is precious. In fact, when it takes me to a place of hurrying, that is kind of an escape from the preciousness. And I miss out on the preciousness when I'm in a hurry. Nonetheless, this feeling of urgency is a treasure because the urgency, that feeling of urgency, that discomfort with what I am doing and where I am right now, that comes from uh, sensing uh, a, a misalignment between what you're doing and what you should be doing. I mean, it, it's the feeling, this feeling of urgency means that, that there is an aspect of my unfulfilled potential that is ready to be fulfilled right now. And I will not rest easy until I take a step toward the fulfillment of this potential, toward the next flowering of my role here on earth. So that urgency is precious. On a collective level, the same thing happens. Uh, right now, it's obvious that humanity collectively, civilization, is not um, occupying the role that it should be occupying right now. We are ready for uh, a healing role on earth, but we are still in an exploiting, extracting, destroying role, dominating role on earth. This is not where we want to be right now. And it is painfully uncomfortable to, to maintain that. It gives us this feeling of urgency. However, when it's translated into hurry, into we have to do something right now, uh, the, the risk, and I'm not saying that there are not things to do right now, but the risk is that it will rush us into uh, reenacting the kinds of solutions that are not really solutions, but that are part of the problem. So just to make a very, very uh, mundane example, uh, right now, in the rush to get off fossil fuels and reduce carbon emissions, power plants in Germany are importing wood chips from <laughs> Namibia, which is deforesting all of its forests, oh. and Romania, and oh. the Baltics, Eastern Europe, yeah. and, and you know the, these converted coal plants are incinerating entire forests. And when you do the accounting, oh, carbon neutral energy, we're part of the solution. Uh, and, 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 this is, cause, and this is like the easiest, fastest way to reduce on paper, at least, your carbon emissions. But actually, it's part of the same mindset and the same industrialized conversion of earth to product, earth to fuel, as has been going on in the first place. And that's where hurry can take us. Where if we really sat with the urgency, we would recognize that it is coming from the discomfort of a dominating oppositional view toward earth that does not hold every single place and being sacred. When we understand that, then other kinds of environmental policies arise that are first and foremost about conservation and restoration, protecting wetlands and forests and practicing regenerative agriculture that rebuilds soil and rebuilds biodiversity. That's, that's, that's where our urgency really wants to take us, in my opinion. Because, you know, personally, I don't think that the uh, possible extinction of the human species is going to force us to change. I don't think we're going to be forced to change. 
I think we're being offered an opportunity to choose what world we want to live in. And the choice, and I wrote a book that, that advances this hypothesis uh, on climate change, um, but the choice that faces us is not, do we survive or not? The choice is what kind of world do we survive on? What kind of world do we live in? What kind of world are we going to devote our prodigious human gifts toward creating? Is it a world that's been changed into one giant strip mine and garbage dump where we have bubbles around ourselves and bubble cities and carbon sucking machines and gigantic industrial fermentation facilities that, that make artificial food and we don't even need nature anymore and the planet dies around us, but we survive? Like what if, what if we can survive uh, on a dead planet? Do we want to? Like that's, what if we, we could actually choose that or we could choose a planet that's coming back to life where we, instead of insulating ourselves from the destruction that we've created, instead we seek to heal it. And we participate, as I said before, in the coming of the world into even more aliveness and beauty. That is the choice in front of us. And that choice is a species choice and an individual choice. Because again and again in life, we are asked, do you turn your energy, your attention, your money, your time toward life and beauty? Or do you turn it toward making sure that you survive even if the world is dying? <laughs>